Hello and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to talk about circles. So let's talk about some of the basics of a circle. Uh, circle itself is defined as a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. So the set of all points here is this blue shaded area or that black circle. That's the circle itself and that's defined as the set of points that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. In this case, the fixed point is called O. The distance from the center to the circle is called the radius. The distance from the center O to the circle itself is called the radius. And in a circle, all radii, if you remember, are going to be congruent. Right, two concentric circles or concentric circles are two or more circles with the same center but different radii. So I have this circle here uh, that's in blue, or identified the blue outline, the circle here, the black outline. They both have the same center as a black dot, and we'll call this O, but they have different radii. So the length of the radius from O to the uh, blue circle is going to be less than the distance from the center O to the black circle. So concentric circles, two or more circles with the same center, uh, but different radii. Okay, the interior of a circle is defined as the set of all points in a plane for which the distance from the center of a given circle is less than the radius for that given circle. So here I identify my radius in blue, and then I can figure out that the interior of that circle is going to be anything, or any point inside of the circle, really, in which the distance from the radius to that point is going to be less than the distance from the radii, or the, I'm sorry, from the center of the circle to the circle itself. So it's going to be less than the radius. So this distance here is going to be less than the radius. As long as the distance from the center of the circle to a given point is less than the radius, then we consider that the interior, the inside of the circle. Okay, the exterior of the circle is going to be the set of all points in a plane whose distance from the center of a circle is greater than the radius. So again, I have my radius, and I can see that my set of all points that are going to be greater than the distance from the center to the circle itself are going to be those points outside of the circle. So the distance from the center of the circle to a point outside of the circle, or the exterior portion of the circle, that distance is going to be greater than the radius. Okay, So as long as that distance from the center of the circle to a point is greater than the radius on the same plane as the circle, then that's going to constitute the exterior of the circle. Okay, a chord of a circle is any segment that joins two points in a circle. So here I have a chord, it joins two points in a circle. I can draw an infinite number of chords, but there's only one, well, there are several chords, but a chord that runs through the center of the circle is called a diameter. Right, so a diameter is a chord, but not all chords are diameters. So some chords are diameters, but not, uh, some chords are diameters, but not all chords are diameters. All diameters, however, are going to be chords. So when you have the always, sometimes, never questions, if it says always, sometimes, never, a chord is a diameter, you say sometimes, you say a diameter is a chord, you're going to say always. All right, so a chord of a circle is any segment that joins two points in a circle. It may or may not be the diameter of a given circle. All right, now when we talk about the distance from the center of the circle to the chord, we're talking about the shortest distance from the point uh, of the center to a point on the chord. And that shortest distance is going to make a perpendicular line with that chord. Any other distance or any other segment uh, that is longer than this particular distance from the center to the chord will not make a right angle with that chord. So the shortest distance between the center of the circle and the chord is going to make a right angle with that given chord. It's going to be perpendicular to that chord. So this distance here we call the distance from the center to the chord. We do not call this the distance from the center to the chord. We define the distance as the shortest path from the center to the chord. And this, in this case, this line here is not the shortest distance and therefore does not create a right angle <clears throat> with the given chord. 
right? So the distance from the center of the circle to a chord uh, is defined as the length of the segment from the center, which is perpendicular to that chord. That brings us to theorem 74. Theorem 74 says if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord. Okay, so we have a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it's going to bisect the chord. Well, how do I know that that's true? Uh, well, and I'm going to ask all my students to write a two-column proof for this, but it's very straightforward. I know that OE is congruent to itself. Um, I know that I have a perpendicular uh, or right angle here in OEA and OEB, and I know that right angles are going to be congruent. And I also know that all radii are congruent, so I can draw two radii from OA and then one from OB. And so I have by HL, I know that OB and OA are congruent because they're radii. I know OE is congruent <clears throat> to itself through the reflexive property. And I know that OEA and OEB are right angles. So through HL I can say that uh, uh, triangle AOE is congruent to BOE and therefore by CPCTC AE is going to be congruent to EB. So if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it's going to go ahead and bisect that chord. All right, moving on. Theorem 75, and again, I'm going to have my students write a two-column proof for this. If a radius of a circle bisects a chord that is not the diameter, then it is perpendicular to the chord. Well, how do we know that that's true? Okay, I have OE congruent to itself by the reflexive property. I can say that OA and OB are congruent because all radii of a circle are congruent. Now that leaves me with two triangles that are congruent by side, side, side. I have triangle AOE and triangle BOE that are congruent by side, side, side. Given that they're congruent by side, 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 I know that angle AEO and angle BEO are congruent. And since angle BEO and AEO are congruent and supplementary, they must be right angles. So AEO now is a right angle and BEO is a right angle. So now I can say that OE is perpendicular to AB. All right, the last uh, theorem, the last part of the lesson, we say that theorem 76 is uh, that the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of a circle. All right, and how do we know that? Well, I know that if I have a perpendicular bisector of a chord, that every point on that uh, chord is going to be equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. And I know that O is equidistant from A and O is equidistant from B, so therefore uh, O must lie on the perpendicular bisector. So let's say this is C, and I'm going to go ahead and extend my chord. Right, so I can draw from this line, I can create or identify a point in which the distance from that given point on the perpendicular bisector is going to be equidistant from the endpoints. I know that O is equidistant from A and also from B uh, uh, from a prior theorem that we've established in a prior chapter. So I know that O must lie on the perpendicular segment, which we'll call CZ. All right, lastly, just one more thing that I want to mention to you in passing, we've already talked about this, but we know that we can figure out the area of a triangle, or of a, uh, a circle, excuse me, by taking the formula pi r squared, uh, where r is the radius of the circle. So if we have the radius of the circle, we can find its area. We can also find the circumference, and the circumference is going to be equal to pi times the diameter, or since the diameter is equal to 2 uh, times the radius, it would be 2 pi times the radius. So just in passing, I want to mention these to you because we will use these as part of the chapter.